Today we continue on with our NHL season preview series. We're now looking at the Central Division team, the Winnipeg Jets. Can they get back to being contenders where they were a few years ago? This team completely rebuilt this blue line, and what can they do to get better for the coming year? We'll discuss that coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned today, we're looking at the Winnipeg Jets and conducting our 2021-22 NHL season preview. Of course, last year, we saw the Jets participate in the newly formed North Division. Of course, because of the pandemic and COVID, we had a shortened season of 56 games and only saw divisional play within regions across North America. Of course, we're back to the old way of doing things now, and the Jets return to the Central Division. So, of course, they're competing with teams like the Avalanche and the Blackhawks and the Wild and so on and we're going to kind of get back to where we were a couple of years ago now first we're going to recap what the Jets did last year take a look at how their season went who were their leaders what areas were kind of their main uh, you know uh, sticking points to work on going into the offseason then we're going to look at how this team has changed uh, looking at the exits the additions and then we'll look at where things stand today with their depth charts and where we think they're going to uh, finish this year so let's first up conduct our review of the 2021 NHL season here for the Winnipeg Jets. So, of course, as you can see and recall here, they finished third in the North Division with a record of 30, 23, and 3 for 63 points. They swept the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs, were looking hot, and then they got swept themselves in round two by the Montreal Canadiens, of course, who went on to win the division and compete in the Stanley Cup final against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, the Winnipeg Jets also Again, suffered a, a you know a major uh, loss, losing Mark Shifley to suspension. That certainly played a huge role after that massive hit on Jake Evans, which got him suspended for quite a few games. Of course, the year before, they had an early exit against Calgary after Shifley suffered uh, a significant injury and were out for the rest of the playoffs. So certainly, Winnipeg has had its fair share of Shifley issues when it comes to playoffs the past couple of years. Certainly something they're hoping to avoid here when it comes to their top center for the coming season season and of course didn't really have any impact on their regular seasons the past few years Shifley's been a very productive player but hopefully he can stay healthy and keep everything within the rule book when it comes to playoff hockey now looking at their stats from last year their goals for and against were pretty decent they scored 170 allowed 154 so that puts them 12th best in the goals for category and ninth best in the goals against so certainly not necessarily elite company but certainly in the upper echelon of the NHL Power play was more than solid for the uh, the whole season as a whole here, 22.98%. And the PK was at 80.5, so again, a respectable number. So special teams were good. They scored at a good rate. They defended well. Obviously, this blue line was the main area heading into the offseason they wanted to address, and we'll look at that here momentarily. Now, the leaders of the team in scoring last year were led by top centerman Mark Shifley, as we talked about. Scored 21 goals, put up 42 assists. For 63 points, so he became the leader in points and assists. The leader in goals was the number two scorer of the team, Kyle Connor, who scored 26, put up 24 assists for 50 points. And then Nikolai Ehlers had 21 goals and 25 assists for 46 points. Uh, earlier in the year, Nick Ehlers was absolutely on fire, tearing it up, and of course suffered an injury. Otherwise, I think he would have been the goal-scoring leader last year. He really found another level, especially after we saw Line A for Dubois. But when that trade happened, Ehlers seemed to really find another gear and, uh, and really picked up his goal-scoring pace. He's been a pretty solid player and a pretty good point producer and goal scorer his entire career. But to me, we just saw another level last year, and I'd be curious to see if he can pick that up where he left off over a full 82-game campaign. Now, now we need to take a look next at how this roster has changed. As I mentioned, we know that it was the blue line that the Jets have been slowly rebuilding over the past couple of years. A couple of years ago, they had a mass exodus. They lost several guys to free agency, including Ben Sherratt, including Dustin Bufflin, who basically up and retired. Who Those two guys played together a lot. Generally, as their top pair, they lost Tyler Myers, who went to Vancouver. Uh, you know, and this team really never completely recovered. They've been trying to put some band-aids in place ever since. Uh, they obviously had to trade Jacob Truba as well. They got Neil Pionk, and Neil Pionk has turned out to be a nice find. To me, that was a very underrated trade. I think the Jets made out quite well in that case. Meanwhile, the Rangers are stuck paying Truba $8 million a year, and to my opinion, he's not living up anywhere near that kind of money. So I think they made out well in that trade now taking a look at the exits for this team who is no longer with the winnipeg jets that we saw 
last year. The list is actually fairly long, starting with Mason Appleton, who was the expansion pick in Seattle. Uh, he was turning into being, uh, you know, a more solid young player, grabbing a bigger role. So that is, a, you know, an unfortunate loss, but everybody had to lose somebody here for expansion. Uh, Matthew Perot leaves via free agency to goes to Montreal. Uh, Derek Forbert left as a free agent to Boston. Again, Forbert was a decent addition defensively to help fill a gap last year. But at the same time, they have had bigger plans to uh, replace him in a, in a more prominent way, which they certainly did. Uh, Trevor Lewis leaves Winnipeg as a free agent after one year, goes to Calgary, joining his old uh, bench boss, Daryl Sutter. Uh, Nate Thompson leaves via free agency, goes back to the Flyers. Uh, Jordy Ben goes to Minnesota. Tucker Pullman, who I think the Jets were interested in keeping, signed a pretty rich contract with the Vancouver Canucks, at least rich in my opinion when it comes to term. Um, he certainly got more term and money than I think Winnipeg would have been willing to offer, so he departs to the Canucks. Uh, Laurent Boisois uh, goes to the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, and Sammy Niku, uh, who was expected to be with Winnipeg, suddenly uh, had an agreement with Winnipeg just in the past week or so to have his contract terminated through, uh, through waivers. And he signs with the Montreal Canadiens. So clearly, uh, that's another loss. So uh, some of these guys, like Niku and like Pullman, who were there a long time, a lot of time and money invested in developing these young defensemen, and now they're no longer a part of the organization. But they already have the next wave of young D coming through here, like Sandberg and Hainola, etc., that they can start you know, building into those those roles. So that's a lot of guys out the door. Who has come in? Who are the new Winnipeg Jet additions that are going to be part of this lineup and the solution to get better this year? Well, primarily the list here is a lot smaller than the exits and the two main defensemen were the biggest moves by Chevrolet off all offseason. That includes Brendan Dillon and Nate Schmidt, both acquired via trade. Uh, both ended up coming through here and will really revamp this blue line. Uh, now you throw in those two guys along with guys like Josh Morrissey uh, and Neil Pionk, and you have a much more solid top four. You get uh, Nathan Beaulieu coming back, who they also didn't have uh, for most of last year due to injury, uh, who can play third pair minutes. You get some younger guys there too, and this blue line suddenly looks a lot different. Of course, they also saw their much younger and really big Logan Stanley emerge last year as well, and I would suspect... Uh, Stanley very well could get a regular spot and should be likely part of that top uh, top six. You get Dylan DeMello in the mix too. Uh, and suddenly, like I said, that blue line looks a lot different. I mean, even Nathan Beaulieu may not necessarily play all the time. Like I said, you're going to have uh, you know different guys in and out probably because they have a much better blue line than they used to. And, of course, he, they also added Riley Nash as a free agent who can play a bottom six center role probably on the fourth line. And they have Evgeny Svechnikov as well, uh, who's signed to an AHL contract by trying out to see if he can get an NHL contract. We'll see where things go with the prospect who was a part of the Red Wing system for so long and now looking for a fresh start. Now, next we're going to take a look at the projected lineup, but before we do that, we need to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Exter Smart Wallets. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Exter. Forbes calls Exter the most successful smart wallet brand in the world. They certainly have high quality products, high grade leather. You can put all your cards in your wallet with RFID protection and you can track it worldwide. That's the best part. You don't have to worry about losing your wallet and not being able to track it down. They have a great selection of products to choose from here, a variety of colors and styles, something to surely help for everyone. As you can see in the demonstration here for the product I have, this is a beautiful packaging, high quality. When you open it up, you get a high quality wallet with lots of slots for your cards. You have yourself a money clip if you want to carry cash on you here as well. Uh, and certainly, as you can see, the quality is outstanding. And here you can see the switch where you can help open up your cards. You just one little click and boom, everything fans out right in front of you. Easy to access. Your cards are protected. And here's the back where you have yet another slot. A terrific overall product. And I can't recommend these enough. Extra ships worldwide. And you can check out the link down below in the description as well as the pinned comment to buy yours today. So thanks very much for checking out that promotional content. If you're interested in looking any further at what they have to offer or making a purchase, there is a pin comment that has a link down below. You can check that out and see what you'd like to do. Now, moving on to their projected lineup, and we're going to pull this here from courtesy of dailyfaceoff.com. Daily Faceoff is slowly becoming one of the go-to resources in the world of hockey uh, when it comes to online uh, media stats, etc. They've really added a lot here recently, ever since the uh, you know joining of Frank Cervelli came to town. Uh, he's, they've added several more 
uh, personalities to the mix here when it comes to articles and podcasts, and I'd highly recommend you check out their site if you're not already familiar. Here is the lineup in the forward group projected by them so far. Of course, no big surprise in your top line. You got Shifley, Wheeler, and Connor. Of course, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, will likely center line number two uh, with Ehlers and Andrew Kopp. Kopp should get a consistent top six role. It's his to lose at this point, and I think he can handle it. You've also got a third line right now, uh, Paul Stastny, Adam Lowry, and Veselainen. Now, Veselainen might be one of those players who's been there a while, finally grab a spot uh, with regularity. We'll see. And then, of course, you get Nash. Harkins and Toninato as your fourth line. And you do have a youngster like Cole Perfetti. I have to wonder if they're going to keep him or not. I'm not sure what the plan is for him. He very well could be a player to watch this year as well with Winnipeg. Now, like I said, when it comes to your blue line, it's completely different. Suddenly they have depth again that they've been missing for a few years. And even some younger guys like Hainola, Sandberg, and Bolio may not necessarily play a lot or at least on a regular basis because your top six is likely going to be Morrissey and Schmidt. Dylan and Pionk and Stanley and DeMello. That would be my guess. That's likely going to be your top six based on this projection. But then like I said, like you have those other guys I mentioned who can be like a 7-8 guy and see where they can fit and grab uh, playing time when it's available via injury or whatnot. We'll see where things go. And between the pipes, of course, you got all-star Connor Hellebuck. And Eric Comrie appears to be poised to finally stick with the Jets on a full-time basis and be the backup goaltender. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. He's going to have to play and pick up enough wins for this team to really be uh, you know, as competitive as they hope to be this year. They have to have confidence in their backup goalie. Hellebuck can't play every single game. So as far as my predictions and thoughts on how the season is going to go, Personally, I think the Winnipeg Jets are going to be a highly competitive team. I think outside of Colorado, they could project to finish as high as second place in the Central, although that's far from a guarantee. They are going to have teams like Minnesota and Dallas, I think, will be right up there nipping up their heels. And they could be anywhere from 2, 3, 4 range. St. Louis is going to be in the mix too. Um, but personally, I like Winnipeg more than uh, Dallas and St. Louis. And to a degree, Minnesota as well. Like I really think they can push into second place. But it's not going to be easy. That number two through five spot is going to be a log jam. I don't think there's going to be a great deal of separation between Winnipeg, St. Louis, Dallas, and Minnesota. I mean, Dallas last year just barely missed. And then that was largely due to players being out injured. So you bring those guys back. If they can play what they're used to, then suddenly they're a much better team. Minnesota should be able to pick up where they left off, and they were an excellent surprise team last year. Uh, Chicago, even, I didn't even mention Chicago, and they're greatly improved. At least they look to be on paper, so we'll see where that goes. It's going to be a very tight, highly competitive division. So, to me, I have them pegged for second place right now, but I would not be surprised if it's a little bit lower just because of that high level of competition. Now, to me, they have great goaltending. I do have a little bit of concerns about the backup. Uh, just because Eric Comrie is an unproven commodity. Uh, the blue line to me is greatly improved, so their defensive statistics should at least stay the same, if not get better. And scoring-wise, to me, they should at least stay the same and get better. They didn't really lose much in the way of scoring. I mean, yes, Mason Appleton's not there. Matthew Perot's not there. So they lost a little bit of secondary scoring kind of players, but you've also got a full year of Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now, to me, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a prime candidate as a bounce-back player. Uh, think about what he went through last year, and I realize a lot of fans were disappointed with what they saw from him. But really, like he wanted to trade, had to wait, finally got it. Look about the quarantine he had to go through. Then he got hurt. It's a shortened season. Like To me, like I don't really think you can take that season and really judge what you get with PLD. He showed in the year before with Columbus in that playoff series against the Leafs how dominant he can be, and he can be that player again. Now that he's had a chance to go through a full training camp and play a full campaign or about to with Winnipeg, if he stays healthy, to me, I have no reason to think he'll be that dominant number two center that you thought you were getting in Winnipeg when you made that trade for Patrick Laine. And I would imagine from Laine's perspective, You'll likely see a better version of him in Columbus as well. I know last year it looked like both teams failed on the trade front because neither player really had an immediate impact with those teams. But to me, Pierre-Luc Dubois should be a much better, more productive, effective player this year after not having to go through all those quarantines and hopefully staying healthy. And that will make a huge difference uh, in their lineup. Like you got a pretty solid number three lineup. Number fourth, your fourth line. 
you know, you don't have quite as much experience down there without having guys like Lewis or Thompson as options there in the mix. But the players you do have are pretty solid. So to me, I, I really like this Jets team. I think they're going to be better than last year. And I do think that they could be a team to make some damage in the playoffs. Like in the playoffs, you're not going to really revert to your backup goaltender a whole lot. So like, obviously there's some minor concerns there, but not a whole whole lot so to me winnipeg should have an excellent season like i said i'm projecting to be as high as second place in the central so let me know what your thoughts are on the winnipeg jets what kind of season do you think they're going to have let me know what your thoughts or any concerns you might have on this team down in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe and stick around there's still plenty more previews to come of course along with all the latest news rumors and analysis of all 32 nhl teams thank you for watching i'll catch you next time <music>